Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we are performing a fundamental stock analysis of Carrier Global Corporation, ticker symbol C-A-R-R, CAR. Carrier Global is a very popular subscriber request. It's been requested multiple times. So today we'll be looking at their fundamentals to, to help learn if this is a potentially attractive business to be looking at in today's market. Currently, Carrier is trading for $35.19 per share. So far over the last year, they are down 35%. And since being publicly listed a little under three years ago, the business has done very well. They've compounded at a rate of about 50% annually and they are up more than three times over this period. So Carrier Global is just trading $2 over their 52 week low, and they're down quite a bit from their 52 week high. They are a pretty big business. They have about a $29.5 billion market cap. For more background about the business, Carrier Global manufactures heating, ventilation, air conditioning, refrigeration, and fire and security products. The HVAC business serves both residential and commercial markets. The HVAC segment sales mix is 60% commercial and 40% residential. Carrier's refrigeration segment consists of its transportation refrigeration, Sensitech supply chain monitoring, and commercial refrigeration businesses. The firm's fire and security business manufactures fire detection and suppression, access controls, and intrusion detection products. Carrier Global was incorporated in 2019 and is headquartered in Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. So for our fundamental analysis, we are performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist-style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Carrier Global, based off of their business fundamentals. This analysis is still a work in progress. It will continue to evolve and improve over time, and it's an opportunity to learn in public. So with that said, let's get right into today's analysis. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. So this is important because over the long run, Run over the course of decades, a stock is going to return approximately what its underlying business returns, and because the average publicly listed business only earns about a 7% return on capital. So by looking for businesses that are averaging 14% returns on capital or higher, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off of the overall quality of the business being at least twice as good as average. Carrier Global over this time has earned pretty good returns on capital in the mid-teens, over their last 12 months, they're earning about 16% returns on capital, and over this time, they're averaging out at about 15.2% return on capital. So this is going to be a check to start off on metric number one. Metric number two, we're taking a high-level overview of the cash coming into the business. We want their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows to have grown over this time. This metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up over the past five years, or if even one of them is down, this entire metric will be an X. Throughout this time period, Carrier Global has grown their revenues. They've also grown their earnings, and including their last 12 months, their earnings have actually doubled over this period. Although on a fiscal basis from fiscal 2017 to fiscal 2021, it looks like their free cash flows are up here. Over their last 12 months, their free cash flows have actually been cut in half over this time. So they're producing just about $1 billion of free cash flow over their last 12 months. And so unfortunately, with their free cash flows being down, this means that metric number two is going to be an X here. Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at Carrier Global on a per share basis. We want their earnings per share to have grown over the last five years. So while we have earnings data going back five years here, we only have data for their shares outstanding going back four years to 2018. That's why we're only able to see four years worth of data for their earnings per share here. Over this time, their earnings per share have dropped slightly. It's not as bad as what it looks like from fiscal 2018 until fiscal 2021. However, over their last 12 months, they're earning about $3.12 per share. So that's just down a little bit from where they were at in 2018. And unfortunately, this is going to be another X here on metric number three. Metric number four is going to be very similar. Here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth. So again, with data only going back to 2018, it looks like from 2018 to 2021, their free cash flows per share were up. However, including their last 12 months of free cash flows, their free cash flows per share have actually dropped by about half over this time. So they're just at a little over a dollar in free cash flow per share. So this is going to be our third X in a row here on metric number four. Worth noting as well is that Carrier Global has not really diluted shareholders over this time. Their shares outstanding are pretty close to flat. However, they have issued about one and a half percent new shares. 
Well, that's not necessarily ideal because when you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in a business. And when a business issues new shares and dilutes existing shareholders, they're actually decreasing your ownership percentage of that company, which is going to decrease the percentage of the business's profits that you're entitled to. So one and a half percent dilution is not terrible. And as a long-term investor in the business, you're likely able to live with it. You just don't want to see this business start aggressively issuing new shares and significantly diluting you as a long-term shareholder. Next up for metric number five, we want their net debt, which is long and short-term liabilities minus cash and short-term investments to be below the amount of free cash flow that Carrier Global has produced over the past five years. So at the end of last year, Carrier Global had about $7.4 billion of net debt. This has decreased. Currently, they have about $6 billion of net debt. And over this time, they've generated about $6.8 billion in free cash flow. So this is a great sign here. And this is a check on metric number five. Based on their abilities to produce free cash flows, Carrier Global looks like it's using an appropriate amount of leverage in their business. They're not overly levered. It's a good thing they're not overly levered here because overly levered businesses during times of economic downturns are at the greatest risk of having poor outcomes. Carrier Global looks like if they needed to in a pinch, they'd be able to continue to add to this debt load. So it looks like their balance sheet is in a decent position. Again, this is a check on metric number five. And so far through our first five metrics, we have two checks and three X's. Metric. Then for our final metric, the big metric of them all, metric number six, we want their average free cash flows to their total enterprise value to give us a yield above 5%. If this is the case, this will give us a slight risk premium to the risk-free rate of the 10-year treasury and give us a reason to potentially be interested in the business. We're using their total enterprise value because that's gonna give us a more clear picture of the economic reality for the business by taking into account both their market cap and their net debt position and showing us a view of Carrier Global that's more similar to the business being a private company. Currently, they have about a $36 billion total enterprise value. And we learned that over the past five years, they produced about $8.6 billion of free cash flow, which means that in an average year, they're producing about $1.7 billion of free cash flow. So when we divide their $1.7 billion of average free cash flow, by their $36 billion total enterprise value, that is gonna give us an average free cash flow to enterprise value yield of about 4.7%. So while that is above where the 10-year treasury is at currently, that's just very slightly below the 5% mark we would want to see out of this business. And so this is gonna be an X on metric number six. Worth being aware of as well is that over their last 12 months, they've only produced $1 billion in free cash flows. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business, when we divide their last 12 months of free cash flow coming in at $1 billion by their $36 billion total enterprise value, that only gives us a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield of about 2.8%. That would be well below where the rate of the 10-year treasury is at currently. And so if you're interested in the business, you would want to do more research into the company to learn if these reduced cash flows are going to be more typical for the business going forward, or if they're potentially going to rebound to where they've been historically. Then Carrier Global also pays out dividends. Currently, they have about a 1.6% dividend yield. So here we're taking a look at their dividend profile to make sure that their dividends are healthy and supported by their cash flows so that their dividend payouts can be sustainable going forward. This looks like this is exactly what we're seeing here. They started paying out dividends when they became a listed business in 2020. And since then, even including their last 12 months where their free cash flows have fallen in half, they haven't paid out more than 50% of their cash flows as dividends in a given year. Over their two last fiscal years, they haven't even paid out more than 25% of their cash flows as dividends. It looks like the company would have plenty of room to grow their dividends into the future if they're able to sustain decent cash flows above where their dividend payments are at. Then finally, here we're using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair value for Carrier Global. So starting with an average of their free cash flows, including their last 12 months, and then projecting a growth stage for the business, where we assume that the business is able to grow their average free cash flows at a rate of 5% annually for the next 10 years, then using a terminal growth stage where the company's growth rate just falls off a little bit to only growing at 4% annually for the 10 years out after that. So projecting 20 years out into the future here, then if you were looking for a 10% rate of return from Carrier Global, then it looks like a potential fair value for the business based off these assumptions, which you need to determine whether they're applicable for Carrier Global here for yourself, that a potential fair value for the business would be about $21.50 per share. So that is quite a bit off from where their current stock price is at, at $35 per share. Then using these same growth assumptions, which you need to check for yourself, it looks like at today's prices, 
you could only expect about a 4.5% rate of return going forward on Carrier Global over the next 20 years. Keep in mind, again, this is based off of these assumptions that you need to do more homework on to understand if they're truly applicable here, and that this rate of return would also include their dividends over this time, which are about 1.6% of this return. So keep in mind that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Using a discounted cash flow model based off of what we're doing here is really just useful to give us a baseline estimate for where Carrier Global could potentially be at for the future. It's not necessarily likely that this is going to be accurate going forward for the business. And if you're interested in the company, you're just going to have to do more homework to understand the business and to be able to modify the inputs into this model. So again, before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered financial and legal professionals. So in summary, Carrier Global checks the box on two out of six of our metrics. They're earning pretty good returns on capital in the mid-teens. Their revenues and earnings are up as the business has grown over the last five years. However, their free cash flows have fallen in half over this time even while keeping their shares pretty much flat. Then even with their recent decline in their free cash flows, it looks like the business's abilities to produce free cash flows would allow the company to support their debt load. It doesn't necessarily look like the business is overly levered here. And then even though their average free cash flow to enterprise value yield is above where the 10-year treasury is at currently, it was just below the metric we were looking for. And with a reduction in their last 12 months of free cash flow, their current free cash flow to enterprise value yield is well below where the 10-year treasury is at right now. Then we took a look at Carrier Global's dividend profile. It looks like their abilities to pay out dividends are pretty healthy and supported by their cash flows. And finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of the business. It looks like based off of those assumptions that we put into the model, that at today's prices, you'd only be able to reasonably expect about a 4.5% rate of return going forward from Carrier Global today. Again, it's up to you to do more homework to understand if that model should be applicable or not. So to reiterate, this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Instead, it serves as a beginning and holistic understanding of Carrier Global to help you determine whether it's worth your time to dig in and learn more about the business. If you're interested in learning more about Carrier Global, I would highly recommend starting with their filings. You can read through their 10Ks to get both a history of the business and their operating results. Management will also lay out some of the potential risks that the company faces and give you a better sense of the overall environment that the company operates in. You'll get to learn both management's strategic approach for the business going forward, and you'll get a feel for both the character and competence of management, especially as it pertains to capital allocation. When you're finished with their 10Ks, it would also likely be worth your time to read through their 10Qs and to read through some of their recent quarterly earnings call transcripts. That can help you get a better perspective of the business to really understand if their cash flow issues that they've had more recently seem like they're going to persist or not into the future, or if the company is going to be able to return to where they were averaging out historically, or perhaps even surpass that. So through this deeper research into the business as a value investor, you're ultimately trying to understand the business as if you're going to own 100% of it. And you can truly understand the essence of the business and know all of the ins and outs and understand what's important and what's not for the company. You'll get a feel for both the qualitative and quantitative aspects of the business and be able to determine for yourself what an appropriate intrinsic value for Carrier Global should be. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Carrier Global Corporation, ticker symbol C-A-R-R. As mentioned, Carrier Global was a very requested business to look at. So if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Carrier Global with me, and have a great day.